So Cameron, first question is, why did you become a judicial assistant? Uh, I think there were probably two main reasons. The first was I wanted to experience the law from the perspective of the judiciary. So I had studied the law, I would practiced law, but I still didn't really know how the law was developed. And so here, actually talking to judges after cases, you come to grips pretty quickly with how decisions are actually made. So, so how long did you practice law for? Uh, so I had done a training contract, actually, at a law firm in the city. Okay, which uh, firm? At Linklater's. Uh, and then I went and did some further study. For a year I did my master's, and then I returned to London to this job. Okay, and how hard was it to get? It sounds like you've got a pretty good CV there. Um, well, it's difficult for me to say how hard it was. It was just like any normal job application. So I did a written application. I came here for interview. Never been interviewed by Supreme Court justices before, so I was terrified as I entered the building. Um, but uh, it was just like any normal job, I would say. What an experience. So how many of the justices interviewed you? Uh, so I was interviewed by Lord Dyson, who's now Master of the Royals, and Lord Kerr. Um, they were very friendly and relaxed. I was quite surprised. Probably the most relaxed interview I've ever had. And right now you're working for Lord Newberg, right? Yes, that's right. And what's he like? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've asked him what I'm to say if, I, if people ask what it's like working for him. He said to say, it's fantastic and the pinnacle of one's life. Um, but he's very friendly very relaxed as well. Um, and he gives me a lot of his time. He's very generous, and I've learned a lot from him. Because I've seen him speak a couple of times, and he reminded me of Rabbi Marshak in, you know, the Coen Brothers film, A Serious Man. Is he at all? Have you seen that? <laughs> Nodding my head. I haven't seen that film, um, and I don't know if he, if he uh, has, and I should compare him to it. But um, he's, very, he's very entertaining, okay, um, okay. especially outside of court as well. And, and this role is a year-long role. That's right. right. And um, how has it helped your career, do you reckon? Uh, I think it's helped in a lot of ways. I, the main thing is I sit behind the judges in court so I can really see how um, advocates can perform successfully and not so successfully. Uh, and also just understanding what the best submissions are and what judges are actually looking for um, to make their decisions. Okay, and what's the plan next? Uh, well, as I said, I'm, so I'm a solicitor by trade, uh, but I think now I'm probably inclined to go to the bar after my experience here. Okay, cool. Will that involve some retraining? Uh, no, luckily it won't. So, um, final final question. Tell us a secret about the Supreme Court. Um, well, I'm probably not allowed to tell secrets. There aren't too many, though. It's, it sounds strange to say secret in the Supreme Court in one sentence because it's a very open place. Judgments are now being handed down on YouTube, for example. Um, but one secret is the cafe. Um, well, it's not a secret, but something people don't know is used to be the cells when this was a criminal court. So people now eat their lunch um, where. Criminals used, or defendants used to be before their hearings. Cool. Cameron, thanks very much. Thanks.